she came home. Carlisle's lost an empire. You fall hard enough, you tend to be reminded of what truly matters. So, the end of the line. You ready for this? Are you? Who will you be without a score to settle? <laughs> I guess the world's most wanted fugitive will have to do. Alexa Carlyle is dead. According to the funeral invitation, that is. So naturally, it caused quite a stir when the late matriarch turned up at the breakfast table, alive and kicking. Carlisle, wisely sensing that her number is up, has emerged from exile to tie up loose ends and secure the Carlisle legacy. She may be a monster, but you have to admire her due diligence. Carlisle descends from an ancient line of warrior aristocrats. Her great-grandfather made a killing in the Second Opium War and established an empire in shipping, railroads and newspaper publishing. While largely unknown to the public, the family still asserts its quiet dominance over global transport and logistics, media, and technology. Most senior of the partners, Alexa Carlyle, is cold as ice, tough as nails, and sharp as a razor. Incidentally, it was her late father who first brought the three families together after the end of World War II at this very house, meaning that this gentleman is the birthplace of Providence. It began here. And it ends here. Talk about poetic. One more thing. According to our intel, Carlisle keeps a case file on the constant. Information that may be helpful in his recapture. So don't leave the estate without it. Right. Happy hunting, 47. See you on the other side. Thornbridge Manor, the Carlisle family's home for countless generations. The revenant Alexa Carlisle and her three adult children, younger brother Zachary, grandson and daughter-in-law, are all gathered to conduct Carlisle's sham funeral. Curiously, Carlisle summoned a famous London PI soon after arriving this morning, but his purpose at Thornbridge is yet unclear. Now. The target knows that you're coming, and her guard detail is top-notch. So Mr. Gray will secure their nearby field HQ and intercept all calls going in and out of the estate. Any appeal for backup is going to fall on very deaf ears. Good luck, gentlemen. Phineas Whitmer, private investigator. I have an appointment. Sorry, sir. The crisp shirt will only get you so far in life. Phineas Whitmer, private investigator. I have an appointment with Madame Carlyle. Please wait. Mr. Whitmer is here to see Madame Carlyle. You can go right in. That is Phineas Whitmer, the famous private investigator hired by Madame Carlyle this morning. I'm curious why he's here. Maybe you should do some detecting yourself, 47. Mr. Whitmer, thank God you're here. Can I take you to Madame Carlyle? Please do. If you'd follow me.
but I just need to check. That's a bit excessive, I think, considering the fact that I spotted no less than two routes to get inside the house unseen. We know what we're doing, sir. Don't worry about that. Mr. Whitmer, thank you for coming on such short notice. A great tragedy has fallen upon us, and I need a quick resolution handled with absolute discretion. Results and discretion are my speciality. Very well. I suppose you will want to start at the crime scene. In my experience, a thorough examination of a potential crime scene is half the job done. Good. Fernsby will take over from here. I am Mr. Fernsby, the butler. Madam Carlyle has asked me to assist you in any way possible. Mr. Whitmer, I understand that you've traveled from London. Would you care for some refreshments, or do you prefer to go straight to Mr. Zachary's sleeping quarters? I prefer to get started. As you wish, if you'll follow me, sir. I feel obliged to point out that current affairs surrounding Madame Carlyle are of a delicate nature. You may be familiar with the recent announcement of her death. You will probably learn that a staged funeral is scheduled to take place tomorrow. Madame's children were not informed until this morning that their mother was in fact not dead at all. So please bear with them if they seem affected by the rather unusual situation. I trust I do not need to remind you that there will be consequences if word gets out that Madame Carlyle is still alive. I'll consider her dead when I leave. Before you inspect the crime scene, I will tell you this. The case concerns the death of Mr. Zachary, Madame Carlyle's younger brother. He was found dead in his bed this morning. The door was locked from the inside and a suicide letter was found in his room. However, Madame Carlyle suspects foul play and will not accept that he took his own life. I've prepared some information for you, so please do come and see me when you've finished your investigation of the crime scene. This is Mr. Zachary's room, to my right. A locked room murder mystery, 47. I trust you'll get to the bottom of this. Zachary's suicide note. Also, a sample of handwriting. It could be relevant to compare to other samples to establish its authenticity. Zachary was shopping for New Wellingtons last night. Not exactly what you would expect from someone suicidal. Why don't you use your camera to scan the dead body, 47? Throat markings indicate a rare, short-lived plant poison killed him. 
Spread shows time of death at around 10 o'clock last night. You do know your poisons, 47. Passage. This could explain how the door was locked from the inside. Hmm. A photocopy of the floor plans. Somebody's been researching the secret ins and outs of Thornbridge Manor. I believe you've done a thorough search of the crime scene, 47. Maybe it's time to see the butler. I'm curious about the information he's prepared for you. Mr. Fernsby, I'm done with the crime scene. Did you establish a time of death? Zachary died around 10 o'clock last night. Well, that means the staff were off duty. And Madame Carlyle and her security didn't arrive until this morning. That leaves Madame's family and myself as the only persons here when he died. And before you ask, no, I do not have an alibi. I was alone in my office at the time of death. Here is the material that I prepared for you. It's a list of the possible suspects and their quarters. Hopefully that will help you keep track of your findings. Please come and see me when you've solved the case, and I will take you to Madame Carlyle. This is very useful information, 47. So how does one solve a murder mystery? Patrick Carlyle, can you tell me where you were yesterday evening? May I suggest you ask the suspects for alibis? Or perhaps you prefer searching the manor for clues first? Give us some privacy, would you? Don't tell Mother, okay? She's really tense these days, and the last thing I need is more hassle. I took that pretty blonde, um, Rosie uh, for an evening Stroll. I mean, how the fuck am I expected to cope for an entire weekend in this shithole? I'm bored out of my mind. So, is that it? What did you think of Zachary? <laughs> Creepy as hell. No ambition. Imagine deciding to live in a museum. You know, father says Zachary and Alexi used to be two of a kind. He had a great future ahead of him. Then suddenly, he just gave up everything. What an idiot. Thank God Daddy chose looks and brains over pedigree when he married Mummy. I don't have to worry about the inbreeding so customary in these circles. If that's all, I think I'll get back to Did you see anything suspicious last night? No. I reckon Zachary topped himself. I know I would have. Or perhaps Mr. Fernsby. I don't like him. He could have done it. Rebecca? Yes. She's insistent, that one. She kept asking all kinds of questions. Get out my face, civvy.
That is the door to Mr. Fernsby's office. Coat and all. Rosie, you need to forget about Patrick. No good's gonna come of it. Stick to your own kind. <sighs> you mean like Chris? He treated me like shit. All he wanted to do was play his stupid video games. Never any romance. I deserve romance. plays the strings of my heart with that piano. I can feel the hair on my neck stand. <laughs> Professor Edward Carlyle, can you tell me your whereabouts for last night? Oh, yes, this dreadful business with Zachary. I stay at the local inn. You see, I prefer not to spend the night here at Thornbridge Manor. My brother Gregory came along for a nightcap. He'll never admit it, but I think he understands that I find this whole thing upsetting and wanted to provide some comfort. I believe we went to the stag's head around half past eight. If that's all, I have a speech to write. Can you tell me about Zachary's behavior last night? I certainly didn't expect him to commit suicide. Sure, he was upset by Mother's supposed death. We were. But he seemed more engaged than usual. You should ask Rebecca, they had a long talk. Did you know that he hadn't left Thornbridge Manor in nearly 50 years? His plants, Mother, and the staff, all the company he had. Anything else I can do to help? Did you notice anything else out of the ordinary? You mean apart from the fact that we came here to bury our mother and she shows up alive and kicking? Zachary found dead in his bed this morning, or perhaps that the planned funeral is still taking place and I have to do the eulogy. And Mother will surely have strong opinion on it afterwards. I can't breathe. Excuse me. That's what it is. Making us come here to play funeral and then show up like nothing's the least bit strange. Well, don't get your knickers all twisted. I'm telling you, she's not fit to be in charge anymore. Emma Carlyle, can you tell me where you were yesterday evening? Surely I'm not a suspect. I need to account for everyone. Well, I spent the evening with my family, but I got an awful migraine and had to take to bed. Everyone can attest to that. I believe I went up when the boys sat down for a drink around 8 o'clock. Is that all? How did you feel about Zachary? I might as well be honest. His presence was always awkward. But how do you have a meaningful conversation with a man who only cares about plants? In my opinion, Alexa bears some responsibility for how this ended. She supported his self-limiting behavior by letting him live here. Anything else? Have you noticed anything else out of the ordinary? Nothing special comes to mind. Except, perhaps, I did get a feeling that Zachary was depressed, not just sad. I suppose he realized that he had no one with Alexa gone. Even Alexa must feel the pangs of guilt over that one letting him believe she was dead. Then again, guilt isn't her strong suit.
Gregory Carlyle, can you tell me where you were yesterday evening? Oh, you're wondering about my alibi, Mr. Detective. Well, um, I left Thornbridge around half eight for a pint with Edward. I wish I hadn't. <laughs> Quiz night at the inn. On the other hand, staying here with Zachary, my obnoxious sister, and the wife sporting another one of her headaches would have been a fate worse than death. <laughs> the, the short of it, Zachary was very much alive when we left. I stayed for the last shout, and I was back here just before midnight. Is that all? Not very thorough. Tell me about Zachary. Zach? Huh. Such a sad old sod. A bit heavy on the bottle. But who could blame him? The only company he had was his rare plants and mother, who travels more than she stays here. Honestly, I can't say which is the bigger ball. He's better off dead. Anything else you want to pry from my... Anything else you'd like to tell me? Nothing, really. I'm just enjoying the show. Our perfect mother obviously fucked up, didn't she? Faking her own death. You know, she's explained nothing to us. I think she's scared to own up to her own mistake. Rebecca Carlyle, can you tell me about yesterday evening? We don't really see much of each other, my brothers and I. It's our mother's funeral to bring us together, and even then, it's not like we sit on each other's laps. Now, let's see. Patrick, Gregory's son, disappeared straight after dinner. You know, I think he might be in some sort of trouble. Edward wanted to go as well, but Gregory convinced him to stay for a few drinks before they went off for a pint at the local at a quarter to nine. I swear Gregory enjoys Edward's discomfort over staying here. I had a conference call with my New York office at nine, so I spent three hours on my laptop in my room and went straight to bed afterwards. I don't know about Emma. She did act a bit strange. You know, I bet she was making lists for changes needing to be done once she gets her hands on Thornbridge Manor. Quite the shock she had when Mother arrived during breakfast. Is that everything, Mr. Whitmer? Tell me about Zachary. Did he act strange last night? You know, now you mention it, he was a lot more chatty than usual. He wanted to know about my connections in the publishing business. Apparently, a friend of his is writing a book, which strikes me as very peculiar. I didn't think he had any friends. Is there anything else you want to ask? Anything else you feel like mentioning? I may be wrong, but I saw Mr. Fernsby, the butler, leave Zachary's room early this afternoon. And he seemed a bit startled when he saw me in the hallway. It's probably nothing. Oh, and one more thing. Please be kind to Edward. He can only take so much. Is that everything, Mr. Whitmer? I do have a lot to see to.
Listen, Gregory. Something's off. Proof of words rejected. We all signed the bloody thing four days ago. So I got hold of the office. Gutenberg, hello. Yeah, listen. No, listen. I, I understand, but you need to talk to Anthony about that. Calm down. Yes, I understand. I'm sure we can come to some arrangement, but you really need to talk to Anthony. He's the man with the papers. Listen, you know who I am, who my grandmother is, was, right? Just relax. It'll be fine. You'll get your returns. Don't worry. Give Anthony a call, okay? We'll have to pat you down. You're trespassing, and I don't do warning shots. You need to stop right there, sir. Yeah. Hey, you drop that thing right fucking now. Enough. Stop. Right Sir. I don't see him snooping around you. Sister, I bet Alexa said something. If I could be bothered, I'd be worried about your message. We don't have any extra fuses. Ethel looked everywhere. Oh, you've got to. No power. Madam Carlyle wants a picture taken. If you were to assist with the missing fuse, I'm sure the portrait would be one for the ages. I don't believe for a second. Zachary committed suicide. He'd only just run through his plan for the spring seedlings yesterday. Yes, sure. 
But he, he was upset, believing his sister was dead. I'd say worried about how things would be handled with Gregory and Emma taking over. I said they let him stay here, but Ethel was sure Emma would throw him out the first chance she got. Now we'll never know. Oh, my. You're taking this hard, aren't you? Broken lab equipment. It looks like it was recently used, though. Good today, sir. How are you today, sir? Coming along inside. Is everything ready for tomorrow? I can't deal with all this pretend funeral stuff. Rosie, tell me what you did last night. I'm in trouble, aren't I? I. I spent the evening with Patrick. We met after dinner and I went home at one in the morning. He said he needed someone real to talk to. When he Would looks you at you, it makes you feel like the center away from of the me, universe. Please. Like a real princess. But now he just ignores her. Well, he's under a lot of pressure. He's an idiot. That's what he is. from all the decisions. I mean, pram or stroller, comfort or not. Should I ask her to marry me?
Greetings, sir. Hello there, sir. That is the door to Rebecca's room. Mr. Fernsby? Mr. Whitmire, you have enough evidence to present your case for Madame Carlyle? No, not yet. Come and see me when you do. You only knew. I can see from the log that Rebecca was in a conference call from 9 p.m. to midnight last night. Transfers from the Carlisle account, HTC depot number 5085. No, I need it immediately. Yes, I'll hold. Yes, I'm still here. It doesn't exist. What do you mean it doesn't exist? Yeah, keep it real. leads to Emma and Gregory's room. Oi, what? You need to discard that thing in your hand right now. Nice and slow. I got you. It is my duty. I received the full. Token for the that Milton happen. Fitzpatrick London Bank. Did I understand correctly? I should give it to the best. Can't you just relax? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. That door leads to Emma and Gregory's room. Imagine the scandal if the first thing in the sun picked up the torch. I bet 
he's stringing all the girls along like that anyway. what you would do. Hey, how you doing? Attack, regroup, close the gates and wait it out. I can see from the log that Rebecca was in a conference call from 9 p.m. to midnight last night. Who am I kidding? He's probably not looking for anything serious. I don't want to... Oh. Come on, you copy? Think we have a situation? Someone's taking a serious piece of Come on, do you read? Now this is interesting, 47. A letter from Emma's mother stating that Emma is the illegitimate child of Alexa's late older brother, Montgomery. And listen to this. 
She claims to have witnessed Alexa and Zachary murder him. The plot thickens. And for the greenhouse. What's that doing in Emma and Gregory's room, I wonder? And why is the key missing? This is a table showing lethal dosages for the poison used to kill Zachary. Something is circled, 47. Female, age 65 to 79, 60 to 64 kilograms. I'd say Madame Carlyle is next in line for a poisoning. You have uncovered enough evidence to tell Madame Carlyle that Emma is the murderer. Quite the detective, 47. I'm impressed. I suggest you go tell Mr. Fernsby. Unless you think there are more secrets to uncover. What is it, Fernsby? Mr. Edward is not coping too well with the situation. I am ready to present my conclusion to Madame Carlyle. Very well. If you'll follow me, sir. Detective skills have gained you access Please to the Lion's that. Den, 47. Now, go claim your reward. So, Mr. Whitmer, you've reached a conclusion. Take a seat. Please, go ahead. Your niece, Emma Carlyle murdered your brother, Zachary. My niece? 
Emma is not my niece. She's my daughter-in-law. And your niece. Emma is the illegitimate child of your late older brother, Montgomery, who you and Zachary killed 46 years ago. That's preposterous. You asked me to find out what happened to Zachary. Would you rather not know? No. I found a letter from Emmer's mother, Jane, who was the fiance of your older brother at the time of his death. She witnessed how you and Zachary pushed him off the balcony. She believed you did it to steal the Carlisle Empire from her and her unborn child. And she raised Emmer to reclaim what she lost, marry your heir, Gregory, get revenge, and secure the Carlisle Empire for her bloodline generations to come. Emma is the daughter of Montgomery and that local girl, Jane. She is. Well, the girl got it wrong. I didn't steal anything. I did what was necessary to protect the future of the Carlisles. Montgomery wasn't cut out to take over from father. All heart and no balls. Emma used the funeral gathering to speed up her installment as the lady of the house, seizing the opportunity to stage Zachary's suicide. She did her homework, used a poison made from one of Zachary's rare plants, found old floor plans from Thornbridge Manor to gain access to his room through a secret passage. That scheming bitch. More than you think. I found proof that she will try to poison you next. Well, I'll have to take care of that. Thank you, Mr. Whitmer. You have not disappointed. I promised you I would reward you generously if you solved the case. So, what do you suggest? I want the file you have on Arthur Edwards. Edwards, the constant. But how do you... I see. I expected you might show up. But to kill me, not help me. But I've been wrong on so many things lately, so why not this one? I will give you the file on Edwards. You've earned it. I don't suppose I could convince you to deal with my daughter-in-law now you're here. I would like to see her dead. No? What a shame. I'll have to see to it some other way then. Just keep calm. Peculiar icons above the safe. I wonder if they might be some sort of a code. Maybe have a look around the office, 47. How are you, sir? A safe in Madame Carlyle's office. I bet that's where she keeps the file on Arthur Edwards. Good work, 47. That's the file on Arthur Edwards secured. Time to take care of Madame Carlyle.
For centuries, the Carlyles have fought to prosper, all of us alone. We could crush them all. Hi there. never got to learn that the horrible thing we did was for nothing. To protect the Carlyle legacy, what bollocks. It's all gone, my dear. Oh, bloody hell, I can tell did I not see it. <laughs> I doubt our big brother could have botched it up any worse than I have, even if he tried. Well? Well? Well, what did you find? Ah. Uh. Person Christ. You really don't have a clue. You asked me to find out what happened to Zachary. Would you rather not know? No. No, go on. I found a letter from Emmer's mother, Jane, who was the fiance of your older brother at the time of his death. She witnessed how you and Zachary pushed him off the balcony. She believed you did it to steal the Carlisle Empire from her and her unborn child. And she raised Emmer. Your heir, Gregory, get revenge and secure the Carlisle Empire for her bloodline generations to come. Emma is the daughter of Montgomery and that local girl, Jane. She is. Well, the girl got it wrong. I didn't steal anything. I did what was necessary to protect the future of the Carlisles. Montgomery wasn't cut out to take over from father. All heart and no balls. Emma used the funeral gallery to speed up her installment as the lady of the house, seizing the opportunity to stage Zachary's suicide. She did her homework, used a poison made from one of Zachary's rare plants, found old floor plans from Thornbridge Manor to gain access to his room through a secret passage. That scheming bitch. More than you think. I found proof that she will try to poison you next. Well, I'll have to take care of that. Thank you, Mr. Whitmer. You have not disappointed. I promised you I would reward you generously if you solved the case. So, what do you suggest? I want the file you have on Arthur Edwards. Edwards, the constant. But how do you... Oh, I see. I expected you might show up. But to kill me, not help me. But I've been wrong on so many things lately, so why not this one? I will give you the file on Edwards. You've earned it. Where are you going? Please, sit down. Thank you. I'll give you the file on Edwards. You've earned it. I don't suppose I could convince you to deal with my daughter-in-law now you're here. I would like to see her dead. No? What a shame. I'll have to see to it some other way, then. The file you want is in the safe. God, I hope you get Edwards and make him hurt. I need some privacy. Thank you. Good work, 47.
That's the file on Arthur Edward secured. Time to take care of Madame Carlyle. Mission complete. Well done, 47. Constantine! Gonna take us all on? Don't. Yeah! Tell the constant to start running. You think you've won? Forty-seven is out there, and forty-seven never misses his mark. Neither do you, Miss Burnwood. That's what makes you valuable. You're delusional. You think I would betray 47? Trust me. You owe him nothing. What is this? I told you we could help each other. And I meant it. I look forward to your call. Gray is gone. Go to Berlin and stay out of sight. We're all that's left now. <laughs>